In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the tangent vector or tangent line to a curve. The idea is that if we're given a curve C, which is defined by a vector function r equals r of t, then the derivative r prime of t gives a vector that is tangent to the curve at r of t. So to break this down, we're given a curve C, that might be just the squiggle here, and the curve is defined by this vector function r equals r of t. That just means when we plug in t into the function r of t, that gives us a point on the curve. And as we increase or decrease t, um, that traces out more points along the curve. Now the big idea here is that if we know the vector function for the curve, then we can find the tangent vector to any point by just computing the derivative r prime of t. Now, say we want to find a vector that is tangent to the curve at r of t. So say we, we plug in for t here and we find where that spot is on the curve and say we want to figure out what vector is tangent to that spot on the curve. Um, well, the big idea is, here is that we can find the tangent vector by just computing the derivative of the function which provides us with the curve. All we have to do is differentiate and that gives us a tangent vector. One last detail here is that this vector points in the direction of increasing t. So if the curve is going this way as we increase t, then the vector is going to go that way also. Um, the tangent vector will point along with the curve in the same direction. Okay, so now that we know the big idea here, let's put it to use in an example. Um, in this example, the unit circle is traced out by this vector function, r of t equals cosine of t sine of t. And we want to find the tangent vectors at uh, these values of t, zero, pi over three, and three pi over two. So first of all, how do we find the tangent vector to this curve at any point t? Well, remember the big idea is that all we have to do is differentiate. We just need to find r prime of t. And we can do that by taking d over dt of that vector result here. d over dt of cosine t sine t. And the way we do that is we just take the vector which is the derivative of each component. So take the vector of d over dt of cos t as the first component and then d over dt of sine t as the second component. And what does that come out to? Well, derivative of cosine is negative sine. So first component, negative sine t, and then derivative of second component, uh, derivative of sine t is just cosine t. So there we go, that's, that's our result. This right here is our, our tangent vector at any point t. Now we want to find the tangent vector at these particular points for t, so all we have to do is plug in t and evaluate the result. So r prime of zero, for example, is just all negative sine of zero and then cos of zero. And that comes out to, well, uh, sine of zero is just zero, so negative zero is still just zero, and then cos of zero is one, so zero, one. Um, why don't we put this vector on our diagram here? So, so this uh, zero, one, uh, that's, that's just going upward. Uh, we're starting at the point given by r of zero, and then we're going upward here. Um, so, so here we go, that's r prime of zero. And, and does that look like a tangent vector? Well, well, yeah, it sure does. The tangent vector is just going straight up, uh, and that looks, that looks pretty accurate. Okay, that looks good. Um, so how about, um, how about r prime of, the next one is pi over three. All right, so let's do this. So that's gonna be negative sine of pi over three and then cosine of pi over three. And then, so negative sine of pi over three. Well, sine of pi over three is just, uh, that's just root three over two and then a negative in front of it because negative sine. And then cosine of pi over three is just a half. Okay, so now let's, let's try and draw this on our diagram. So we see that it is going to the left by negative root three over two, um, going up by a half. So it's going to the left a little bit more than it goes up. So yeah, that, that seems about right. Um, it's it's diagonal, uh, but going towards the left a little bit more than it goes up. Great, so that's r 
prime of pi over 3. Uh, oh, we can also see that our tangent vectors are going in the right direction. Um, the unit circle, as we increase t, the unit circle traces out this way, and that is indeed the, the direction that our, our tangent vectors are going in. Okay, so great. So we've, we've checked that one, and let's just do the last one. t equals 3 pi over 2. So r prime of 3 pi over 2 is just negative sine of 3 pi over 2, and then cosine of 3 pi over 2. Um, well, what is that? Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and then if we apply a negative to that, then we, we get just positive 1. And then cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. So 1, 0. Let's, let's plot this here. So starting at the point r of 3 pi over 2, and then going in this direction, 1, 0. Well, that's 1 unit to the right, and 0 units up. So just horizontal this way. That's r prime of 3 pi over 2. And yeah, that looks, that looks very tangent, just very horizontal and going in the correct direction. It's going counterclockwise. So, so perfect. There we go. There are tangent vectors. Now here's an example where we want to calculate the tangent line to a curve. We're given a curve C which is defined by this vector uh, function, t to the fourth, e to the one minus t, and sine of pi t. And we want to compute the vector equation of the tangent line at a particular point p, which is one, one, zero. So we're gonna break this down into three steps. Uh, first, there's, there's step one, we want to find the value of t, which corresponds to p. And then once we have that, we're going to be able to find the tangent vector at p. And we'll just end up differentiating our position vector, and then we'll plug in whatever value of t we found in step one. And then using that information, we'll find the equation of the tangent line at the point p. Okay, but first step, first step is to find the value of t, which corresponds to p. We want to find the value of t such that r of t is equal to the vector which points to the point p. So it is equal to the vector 1, 1, 0. Okay, so let's substitute in for r of t. r of t is just t to the fourth, and then e to the 1 minus t, and then sine of pi t. All right. And that has to be equal to 1, 1, 0. So, so looking first at the first components, there's t to the fourth and 1. So, so we need t to the fourth to equal 1. And so that leads us to two possibilities here. We've got, uh, we've, we've got t equals positive 1 or t equals negative 1. And so we need to check the other components to see which ones of these possibilities is correct. Um, so first of all, let's look at uh, the, the positive one possibility. So R of positive one, if we plug in that, that's just, so, so positive one to the fourth is just one. And then E to the one minus positive one, that's E to the zero and then sine of pi times positive one is just sine of pi. And what does that come out to? Well, that's one, and then e to the zero is one, and then sine of pi is just zero. So yeah, great, that matches up. Um, great, so it's, it's, it's t equals plus one that we want. Um, just, to, just to be sure, let's, let's check also t equals minus one. If we did r of minus one, then the result there would equal, well, minus one to the fourth is, is just one, and then e to the one minus negative one, so e to the one plus one, so e squared, and then sine of pi times negative one, which is just sine of negative pi. So the result there would be one, then e squared, then zero, and then that, that middle component e squared wouldn't match up with what we with what we wanted. So so this wouldn't work out. Okay, so t equals plus one. That is the value of t which corresponds to p. Great. Um, now we're ready to move on to the second part. We want to find the tangent vector at the point 
p, and we're going to do that by differentiating this position function and then just plugging in that value t equals positive one. So differentiating, we have that r prime of t is the derivative d over dt of this vector function t to the fourth e to the one minus t and then sine of pi t. All right, and then we can just compute the derivative component wise. So first of all, first component derivative of t to the fourth, well, we just bring down the four and the power rule, that's just four t to the third. And then derivative of e to the one minus t, um, well, we just use the chain rule here. So derivative um, of e with respect to its argument is just the same, that's, that's e to the one minus t. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the argument. Um, the derivative of the argument here is gonna be negative one because of that negative t. So it's gonna tack on a negative sign here. Okay, and then sine, uh, we're also going to use the, the chain rule here. Um, so let's go ahead and take derivative of sine. Derivative of sine is just cosine, cosine of pi t, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Uh, derivative of the inside is just pi, so there's gonna be a pi multiplying that cosine. Okay, great. So now we just want to find this, this tangent vector at the particular point t equals, t equals positive one. So we wanna find r prime of positive one, and that's equal to four times one to the third is just four, and then negative e to the one minus one, so negative e to the zero, and then pi cosine of pi times one, so pi cosine, so pi cosine of pi. And then the, the result there is just gonna be four, and then negative e to the zero, that's just negative one, and then cosine of pi is negative one, so times pi makes negative pi. Okay, great. So, so this is our, our tangent vector at the point P, and we're going to use that to find the equation of the tangent line at P. All right, so the equation of the tangent line at P, we're gonna write it down as capital R equals small p plus s times r prime of one. And so I know I've just introduced some, some new variables here, some new notation, um, but I'm gonna explain it, so don't, don't worry. So first of all, capital R, that is going to be the position vector of any point on the line. And we use capital R just so that we don't confuse it with the vector equation of the curve, which is written as small r. Likewise, we're using the parameter s so that we don't confuse it with the t that appears in the vector equation of the curve. Lastly, small p vector is gonna be the position vector that points to this point p, capital P, uh, one, one, zero. So it's gonna be one, one, zero, but in vector instead of in point parentheses. The intuition behind this formula is that we're starting with a vector that points to the point P, one, one, zero, and then we're traveling in the direction of the tangent vector uh, by S units, and that'll take us to different points along the tangent line. So now let's go ahead and substitute the information. Uh, so R is just the vector to the point P, uh, so just vector one, one, zero, and then plus s times the tangent vector, and the tangent vector is right here, s times four, negative one, negative pi. And there we go, there's our equation of our tangent line. In the future, we'll also learn how to use the tangent vector to compute other geometric properties of vector functions, such as calculating the angle of intersection between two curves.